you can run beautiful line of sight explorations in Albert Rodeo with Dynamic Fog. Here's how. We'll show you how to use fog tools, add lights to characters, add doors, navigate your party, and add environmental lights. Before you start, you'll need to open a room in your Albert Rodeo account, and you'll need to install and enable the Dynamic Fog extension in that room. First, let's use the fog tools to define all your enclosed spaces. Here you can see the full map that I'm using in color and without fog obscuring any part of it. We'll stay in fog single layer mode to ensure that we're starting simply, so the multi-layer icon should be crossed through. And I like to add my fog shapes onto the map as I go along, in order to see them clearly in contrast, so I'll leave the scissor icon crossed through also. OK, I've selected the rectangle tool and I'm click dragging across this room on the map to define it in the fog. For the GM, the scene remains visible through the fog layer, but the fog has the effect of desaturating all the colours, turning everything monochrome. This helps to show the GM which areas are currently visible to the players and which remain hidden to them. Note that as I move the mouse, the room is hidden under that shape so I can see what I've included. Wherever the fog is added, the GM sees a desaturated view of the map below, but the players would see the map becoming hidden by the fog. As I add more fog shapes, I can move through the map, ensuring that each space is defined with one of them. And I can use the other fog tools to cover non-rectangular areas like the circular tower, or even this hexagonal gazebo. If I have a complex enclosed space, like this corridor, then I can simply make several shapes next to each other. And by using the Quick Selection Fog tool while holding the Shift key, I can select them together and join them into one single shape as soon as the Shift key is released. The Brush tool allows you to trace more complex shapes in a freehand fashion, like cave walls, but to prevent creating a huge number of small pieces of wall that could cause a performance issue, the Dynamic Fog extension will intelligently simplify the resulting walls, to maintain smooth graphics and movement across different devices. I'll finish by adding fog shapes to the remaining areas on this map. And then I can use the Fog Fill tool to flood all the areas that don't have their own dedicated shape, like the area outside of the walls. So far, this process has been identical to using static fog, which you would reveal manually as the party progresses. That's the simplest method of adding fog of war to your scene, and it's included in the core website. However, it can become tedious to have to clear these shapes one by one, just to allow your players to see what's in the next area, and perhaps to flip them back to opaque afterwards when the adventuring party has left them behind. So let's look at what the dynamic fog extension allows us to achieve. Next, let's add a light to one of our character tokens. Here's one of my player character tokens at the front door of the guild hall, but you can see that the fog is still opaque. So, I'll select the token and click on its three dot button to bring up the overflow toolbar, and finally click on add light. Instantly you can see the effect on the GM view and on the player view, with the token gaining a circular light that automatically reveals what's under the fog. Also, you can now see the four light settings available to this token. You can set the range of the token's light, which displays the same measurement units that you've chosen in the scene controls popover in the lower right corner of the screen. You can also choose between two different edge styles, a relatively fast drop off at the outer edge of that range, or a much softer transition from light to dark. The angle control defaults to a 360 degree all round light with a bare bulb icon, or a much narrower flashlight style of lighting, which produces a cone of illumination that's as wide as it is long, and that follows the rotation of your token. We'll leave the lights type set to character, shown by the portrait icon, because you'll see the other option when we add environmental lights into the scene later on. The remove light option at the foot of the overflow toolbar will remove the light and all its settings. If later you add light to this token again, you will get the default values. Note also that whenever the GM has the fog tool set active, every light in the scene has a small light bulb icon on top of it, which gives an overview of where all the lights have been placed. If the door tool is active, any of these light bulb icons can be clicked, which selects the parent token in case you want to change its light settings. Note that once a player character token has a light added to it, the player can also see and change those light settings, 
so that they can manage their own vision and reduce the workload on the GM accordingly. Our character can now see the surrounding area, but if we try to move into the guild hall, the token will stop at the wall and won't be able to pass. This collision mechanism helps keep your players in bounds, and it prevents them from teleporting through walls and revealing secrets too soon. However, we do need to allow the players to pass through open doors or other gaps in walls, so let's add those in now. Now, we'll add doors to our walls through which our lights can pass. When you have the dynamic fog extension enabled in your room, the new door tool in the fog tool set allows us to draw doors, which define any kind of gap in our walls that the players could use to move from one area to the next. With the door tool selected, when I hover my pointer near a wall, I see an orange dot appear at the edge of that fog shape. To mark the door, all I need to do is click on one side of the opening, then drag the orange line along the wall to the other side of that gap, and then release the mouse button. That section of wall now has a door icon on top of it, and is showing in red to indicate that it's closed. To toggle the door state, I simply click once on that door button, and both its icon and the colour of that section of wall will change. If there's a light enable token nearby, then you'll see the light spill through the gap as soon as the door is toggled open, and the token can move freely over that threshold and into the next area. If you place a door in the wrong position, you can double click on it with a door tool to delete it. When you want to define an opening that has no door, like a broken piece of wall or the mouth of a tunnel in a cave system, then you can draw a door in that position and leave it open by default, so that it allows light to pass through automatically as well as allowing tokens to pass through unhindered. Only the GM is able to see doors while they have the fog tool set active. Note that if the GM needs to move a light enable token through any walls, all you need to do is hide the token first, which will temporarily disable the light so the collision is bypassed the token, move it where you want it to be, and then finally unhide it again to make it visible and to bring back its light. Any tokens that have no light of their own, like your monster tokens, which you as GM can always see through the fog, will not be constrained by the walls, so you can move them freely, regardless of whether they are visible to the players. We've now defined our rooms, our doorways, and given light to our character, so the player can move through the map and see what's in the immediate vicinity. However, it's often very helpful to retain visibility of areas that the players have already visited, then they can see how far they've come and can avoid getting lost. So how do we achieve that persistent fog reveal? Next, let's navigate the party through the fog. By default, dynamic fog only shows what's in the immediate area of the character's light, but often it makes sense to leave explored areas revealed even after the players move on, so that they can see their progress as well as identifying any adjacent, unexplored areas that they might like to backtrack into. The easiest way to do this is to use the Quick Selection tool. Holding Alt and clicking on a room will toggle its fog shape between the opaque and cleared states. And you can do this even while the player characters are in the room. If you're using a mobile device, you can do this by selecting a fog shape and toggling its cut state with the scissor icon. Note how the previously explored rooms remain visible to the player after their character has left those behind. Of course, you can also reverse this process and cause rooms that had previously been persistently revealed to fall back into darkness. The same fog cutting feature can also be used to reveal a specific area on a map, even when there's no direct line of sight from any of the light-enabled character tokens, and long before it has been visited by any of them. For example, if you want to telegraph a goal or a destination that the party needs to reach, like this character who's been kidnapped and needs to be rescued. Okay, so our character token can see and can move through open doors, and we can choose to have persistent view of areas that we've already explored. But this map has a large number of light sources. So how do we add those to allow the players to see their illumination from a distance? Finally, let's add environmental lights. This nighttime map includes a number of light sources that are baked into the image, such as candles, torches, and even a blacksmith's furnace. These light sources should reveal the parts of the map that they illuminate whenever any of the character tokens has a line of sight to those areas even if they're too far away to be within range of the character token's light. To show this, I'm going to add a small flame token and place it onto one of the torches at the front door. This simple token is freely available at the link in the description, but you can also use any image that you've uploaded to your account. After scaling and positioning the flame token in the right place on the map, I can add a light to it, but I want it to be an environmental light source with no vision of its own. So I choose the campfire type, 
and then set the range, edge and angle options to suit the torch. I might also place it on the map layer underneath the grid lines to make it blend in. If I reduce the character token's vision range to just its immediate vicinity, say 3 feet, I can clearly see how this torch works. Any area of the map that the torchlight reaches, and that's also in line of sight of the character token, becomes visible to that character, even if the torchlight is way beyond the character's own light range. OK, so let's increase the character's light range again. Now that I have one environmental light set up, I can duplicate it and place it over each of the other lights shown on the map, editing each one's light setting as needed to change its characteristics to match the environment. Having added in the environmental lights to the whole map, I can walk my character token around and through the guild hall to see what it will look like to my players, with distant pools of light hinting at what's in each of those areas long before the character token is close enough to light the area themselves. Now that we have added all the elements of dynamic fog to our scene, we can add in the other player character tokens and their lights, and everyone can see all of the visible areas, ready for further exploration and adventure. To learn more about Albert Rodeo, subscribe on YouTube, or click another video to keep watching.